What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Above and Below, a Salt Life podcast. I'm your host, Kieran Anderson, and today we have Captain Brad Smith on with us. What's up, dude? How are you? I'm great, man. You know, living life here in North Carolina, having a good time. So you're from North Carolina. Give me a little down and dirty about yourself, dude. Um, so myself, recently, uh, September, I retired from the Marine Corps for 20 years. Wow. Uh, kind of hits the name Gunny Bee Outdoors, uh, which my wife kind of named it. And instead of gonna be outdoors, she goes, tie it to the military. It'll be a great thing. Um, so here we are in eastern North Carolina now, um, typically like New Bern, Swansboro, Moorhead City kind of area is where I mainly target fish at. Man, thank you for your service. That's amazing. So you're primarily fishing every day then? Uh, fishing most days, typically uh, this time of year. Um, I don't know when this thing is going to air, but December to January, um, I'm running duck hunting trips. And then that kind of settles down. So, And then I roll back into fishing. So fishing from February all the way through, um, let's say, mid-December, so to say, really. Wow. So uh, do you have your own company then that runs duck hunting excursions and stuff, or how's that go? Yep, I do. I, I'm the sole proprietor and owner of Gunny Bee Outdoors, so I'm my own man. I'm my own boss, and I, I do it all. I love that. That's amazing. How long have you been with Salt Life now? Uh, I've been with Salt Life for almost a year. Um, I think I got tagged tagged up with them probably February or March of last year being 2020 or 2022. Okay. So, yeah. So you fish a lot. Uh, do you own a charter business too then when you're going fishing? Yep. So uh, Gunny Bee Outdoors is like all inclusive. Um, everything. everything. Everything I do, man. I, I do. Um, in North Carolina, we call inshore fishing, which is everything inland waters, um, near shore fishing out to 12 miles, offshore fishing when I can run the boat out there in nicer weather days. I do bow fishing. I do flounder gigging when we got it, got it in season. And I also do, you know, the d- duck hunting thing. Jeez, dude, you guys do it all. I love that. I try to stay busy with it um, and not so my myself around one niche. Yeah. I like to do everything and I, I, and I like to throw different experiences out there for people. How long have you been doing that for? Fishing since I was a kid, man. Um, yeah. Probably ever since I could hold a cane pole, catching brim in the pond with my granddaddy. You know, it, it just kind of, it's going bigger from there. What about guiding? You were just about to talk to, about, talk to me about that, so. Yeah, yeah, so guiding, um, so this is my fourth season now in, in the guiding industry. Um, you know, I've been doing it on and off for, um, I was part-time for the main part, you know, and then once I got closer to retirement, I was able to switch over and go full-time. Amazing. How fun is that? You probably love your job even oh, more man, now. it's awesome. I mean, you're on the water or duck hunting or doing whatever whatever you're doing. I mean, being outdoors is the best thing in the world. It is, man. It's a great blessing. It it really is. Um, You know, from being, I don't know, deployed 12 plus times during a 20 year career and being home and just being able to be on the water for me is very soothing and relaxing. And it's just a great experience for me. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. So do you, do you currently own a boat then? Yep. So, so I run, uh, I got two different boats. I got a 24 foot, uh, blue wave pure bay, um, which is my main fishing vessel anyway. Um, but I do have a backup boat, which is a 20 foot, 20 foot, uh, low roughneck. It's a aluminum boat center console. Um, so I can use that if I got to get shallow or if the uh, bay boat goes down and I can still able to run back and forth on inshore trips kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. So talk to me about the difference between, uh, inshore fishing where you're at and offshore fishing and all that, that kind of just. So, so what we look at on the inshore fishing game is anything inside of an inlet or a pass as some people call it. Um, so it's inland waters, backland waters in bays, marshes, um, kind of areas is what we consider inshore fishing. Um, you know, and then we transition over to the near shore side of things, um, in, in North Carolina, like anything from the beach side to about 12 miles. Um, because up here, you know, we're staying in 30, really sometimes even 10 foot of water all the way up to 50, 60 foot of water, about that 12 mile range. 
Um, so after that, wow, you know, we, we jokingly break uh, with each other. Like, man, it, it's not even considered offshore here until you get out of cell phone range. That's crazy. So near shore is up to 12 miles. Yep. I think I, I think about 12 miles, and I'm like, okay, if I'm going 12 miles out, I'm I'm offshore. You know, like I'm going for tuna, I'm going for mahi mahi and stuff like that. Like, and <laughs> it, it, it is. Uh, uh, I mean, we're we're in a good fishery here too, man. Like our big bluefin tuna fishery here. Um, those big giant bluefins come within three to five miles of the beach from oh, December yeah, through massive, March. Massive fish. So, what is your um, near shore fishing? your bottom fishing or whatever you guys do, what does that look like? What kind of fish are you seeing? So um, kind of what we're looking at, especially during this time during the winter, um, is a lot of uh, black sea bass and vermilion snapper, uh, a variety of grunts and some uh, different porgy um, species, so to say, um, is what you can catch a lot on the inshore side or near shore side of the game. Um, You know, Typically, right now, it's nothing to go from 30 to 60 foot of water and go get a limit of sea bass. And when I'm talking a limit of sea bass, we're, we're talking 15 to 23 inch size bass that come within eyesight yeah. of the beach this time of year. <laughs> that is fun. So, so when you say black sea bass, are you allowed to keep black sea bass where you're at? We are. So we, we're allowed to keep five per person. On each vessel. Um, okay. So, you know, if we're running a charter, um, luckily enough right now, North Carolina still allows the charter captain's limit to go in that too. Um, so if I got anywhere from two to six dudes showing up on the boat, you know, we, we get a seven man limit of sea bass within an hour. Pretty quick, pretty quick on, on a great day. That's so interesting. It's, it's weird thinking about the East coast versus the West coast. Because in the West Coast, we are not allowed to touch black sea bass. Hmm. Like white sea bass, it's fine. You can spear them. You can fish for them. But black sea bass, it's a no-go. Um, how do you guys on the East Coast, how do you target sea bass? I mean, in general, all sea bass, there's so many types of sea bass. But how many or how do you guys fish for them usually? So so what, what I like to do is a little bit more light tackle kind of thing. You know, I'm not using 8,000 class reels. Um, for a sea bass, if you're just dropping <laughs> down one hook, you know, I'm happy with a three yeah. or 4,000 class reel. That way you can actually fight the fish and get, get something out of it and have fun with it. Um, if we're going out real quick, you know, then we can bump up to a five or 6,000, um, double dropper rigs kind of thing or high low, whatever people want to call them with anything from six to eight ounces of lead, huge pieces of cut squid, drop that thing down. And essentially if, if the fish are on fire, you're dropping it and you're reeling it right back up. You guys have flounder, right? I mean, that's that's something over there. Yep, y'all got halibut, and we got our so our flounder. Our flounder's like very small compared to a hab- halibut, right? But here here in North Carolina, we actually have a season for flounder right now. Um, flounder's been a hot topic in this state for the last couple of years, and they're starting to throw some heavy regulations on them. Um, to where the last two oh, they years, are. Yeah, the, the last two years, it's been tough. Um, last year we had a, I think a, f- a month long season where you could, no, la- let me change that. Last year was a two week long season and you could keep four fish a day. This past fishing season, they did a month long where you could keep one fish a day. Our minimum size on the flounder is 15 inches. So they have to be 15 inches to keep. Uh, me personally, if I catch a 15 inch flounder, I'm going to throw it back in the water because it's not even worth eating. Uh, I was going to say what's different too is our flounder, you know, they actually come inshore, um, which is one of the reasons when I started doing this was gigging for flounder, you know, and you go out gigging for flounder in six foot to six inches of water. What about snapper? You guys get snapper over there? Oh man, we got all kind of snappers. Uh, or the main ones that we get are the American red snapper, which here on the Atlantic side, man, like we get a two, three day season typically every year. And every year it, every year it blows a gale or a hurricane comes through and nobody can fish it. So that kind of throws that one out, out the window quite a bit. Um, 
The other snapper that we get that's very plentiful is the vermilion snapper, um, bee liner, you know, wh- whatever people want to call them kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, that fish. Never heard of it. That fish for us, is, it's a five, five, five limit each at a 12-inch minimum. And you can, they're very plentiful as well. You know, and that's what's great. You know, even this time of year, man, like our sea bass, so inside the water column kind of thing, the sea bass are going to be a little bit lower. And those bee liners are going to be suspended in that water column, typically like 20 to 40 foot above those sea bass. So if you catch a limit of sea bass, you know, you kind of slow your drop rate down and figure out where those fish are at in the middle of the water column on your screen. And then you, you catch them all using the same baits too. So that's always what's great. Yeah. So you call it a vermilion snapper. Yep. How the heck do you catch those things? Uh, I mean, same same way with catching sea bass or anything else that we do here, man. Uh, you know, a, du- a double dropper yeah. rig with a hunk of squid or a live little pogey, menhaden. And then there's also a bunch of different butterfly jigs or what I like to use is called a, a blue water candy Roscoe jig. It's like a two ounce little weight weighted jig with a treble hook and you drop that thing down and jig it through the water column and hooks up with bigger fish more often than the cup bait does. <laughs> That's awesome. Is there a, is there a bunch of seasons for you guys too? Do you, can you only catch snapper a certain season or flounder a certain season? So, yeah. So the flounder, you know, we, we talked about it earlier we don't know what we're going to do in 2023 yet on the flounder side of things. Uh, the American red snapper yeah. that season is set on by NOAA in the South Marine Atlantic fisheries. Um, typically that season comes out like May ish, but it's always about that first main weekend after July 4th. Um, so that's the two of them that has a season. The other big one that we target here um, in Eastern North Carolina is grouper. And our grouper season goes from May 1st through December 31st for the majority of the grouper species that we have. Okay. Let me ask you this. For somebody listening in right now um, that wants to get into bottom fishing or uh, fishing over there on the East Coast, give me some tips and tricks for people and what kind of gear they should go get right now. So it depends on really how how deep you want to go and really what you want to target. Uh, um, A lot of the gear that I use is a five or 6,000 class reel. Um, You know, I I jumped on the Florida fishing products down in Florida um, on on their stuff. And I really, I'm a big fan of their reels. It's a lot of drag behind them and they can handle a lot of species of fish. Um, So that's always a big, big plus on that end um, for me. Um, rod wise, you know, anything that can handle from a two ounce to a eight, 10 plus ounce weight. Um, a lot of things are heavy or an extra heavy rod. Um, which me personally, I use all the bull bay products on those, um, which is also down in Florida. You like heavier rods? Yeah. I, for, for bottom fishing, absolutely. I do too. You know, that way you can get that absolutely, fish up yeah. and out of structure as well. So. And, and and also uh, the amount of weight that you can put on that rod or that 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 line to put it down, you know, currents and stuff too, yep. right? So you put a huge weight on there, and the heavier rod is great. So sorry, I interrupted no, you're, you. You're good, man. I'm right. totally in with you on the. <laughs> yeah, heavy, you know, totally uh, in with you. Line wise, man, I, I'm running braid, uh, mainly yep. braid, braid all the way to a snap swivel, and then the snap swivel is where I'm gonna tie my bottom dropper rig on unless I'm actually uh, grouper fishing, then I'm going to run a heavier set of a, uh, a a braid to a mono kind of leader and then hook up my grouper rigs to that. That way I got more abrasion resistance down there on those rocks and stuff on the bottom. Brad, how big are those grouper you guys are getting over there? Uh, I, honestly, man, I'd probably say average size on a gag grouper has got to be... 26 ish inches you know so you're talking like 15 plus pound fish um you know we're, we're yeah. not old florida you know we don't we don't we got a few goliaths here but nothing crazy yeah 
So, you know, our main Still 15 pound grouper. Yeah. Our our main grouper species are gag, black, scamp, uh, red grouper is a lot of the ones that I get to target. You got any cool fishing trips coming up? Uh, so I'll, I'll pick back up fishing, um, mid to late February. Um, so, you know, I'm still kind of running my duck hunt side right now and then starting February, I'll start to be able to get back, um, running some near shore sea bass trips and, uh, bee liner trips also inshore for, uh, a lot of redfish, man, because during the winter and early spring months, our redfish get in schools of three, three to 500 fish. And you go out there and target them things in the flats, and it's Jeez. really fun. In the flats, are you fly fishing? What are you throwing over there? So I, I don't do a lot of fly fishing. Um, that, that would be like just another hobby to pick up and more more stuff I got to run. Yeah. So ma- more, majority, more expensive. Uh, you got to have the money for it, right? <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Uh, but not, the majority of the stuff I'm running, especially on redfish, um, is light tackle, like a, a medium rod setup. I like seven foot rods with a twenty paired with a twenty five hundred class reel that way I can cast it a mile and still be able to fight and work a good fish. Um, artificial baits, I love artificial baits, um, but because I find it, you know, if you can fool a fish to eat an artificial bait versus a live bait or a cut bait or anything, like you've actually kind of fooled that fish and it's more rewarding. Uh, for me and or my customers on that one. Um, so it can change between either a topwater bite, uh, soft plastics, um, some hard baits, suspended twitch baits, all kind of things. We, we'll throw everything at them until we can get them to bite. Yeah, absolutely. That's how fishing is, right? That's why they call it fishing, though, not catching. Uh, exactly. The plastics are so always the best for me. I love plastics. I love jigs. I love anything that's man-made because i think it's so much more difficult sometimes to catch those fish so when you do get them on a jig or a plastic or whatever it is it's so much more rewarding yep you know and i I got some Uh, buddies that do tie their uh, own flies and stuff like that um and some that's tied some jigs and brought me some jigs to try out some some handmade fly tied jigs that i put on some spinning rods and have fun with it, man. Like, uh, you know, especially if I got three or four clients on the boat and they're casting around all stuff I know that works, I'll gladly take somebody's bait that they want me to throw and test. And I'll work that thing and try to figure yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Help, help the little man out. I love it. It's fun to do that too, right? I mean, just supporting other people and everybody's Absolutely. got a different opinion. They want to try different baits. They want to try different flies. And I think it's really fun to try that and see what it can do. And when you do catch a fish on it, you send them a photo and you go, holy smokes, I would have (laughs) never thought, right? I would have never thought this would have caught me this salmon or this steelhead or whatever it is. When I'm freshwater fishing and uh, fly fishing, I use flies all the time that are just like, what the heck? My buddy just gave me this thing and it looks like junk, honestly. But then you catch a good old steelhead and you're like, wow, okay, cool. We're back on. But um, yeah, I had a guy that made up some... uh, some flies and jigs this past year, man. And, uh, he he had like a three or four inch rabbit strip, uh, piece of fur on the back end of it. He goes, man, just try it out. I went and tried it out. And literally the first cast landed a 48 inch red drum on it. And I sent him the pictures. I was like, here you go, man. It works. Dude, that just goes to show everyone listening in right now. If your friends are making lures, if your friends are making flies, you might as well try them. And another thing too is, you know, when, when a plastic doesn't work, when a, when a certain jig doesn't work, switch it out on your rod or reel or switch it out on your rod and throw something else. Try a different color. You don't know just because the water's brown and you're throwing a brown jig. Yeah. That's, you know, you want to go to the same color or whatever it is, <laughs> but try something different. Maybe that fish is colorblind that day or something. Try something different because <laughs> you never know what the fish is going to do. Your buddy might have the idea that we don't have. So uh, it's always fun trying new stuff. I know it's hard sometimes, but it is really fun. Brad, do you, do you have any social media, Instagram, YouTube, anything like that? Yeah. So, um, you know, I got the the Facebook under Gunny B Outdoors. Instagram's the same, Gunny B Outdoors. I jumped on this uh, TikTok trend. 
So I, I, I make some random, uh, I try to do some cool little videos and stuff and still trying to play with that. Um, but it's all the same too. Uh, Gunny Bee Outdoors, like it's a great name. Like my website's got everything under Gunny Bee Outdoors. So it, it's just a name that sticks and it's on every social media platform that I know how to operate. So if anybody wants to book a trip with you or anything, they can just go to Gunny Bee Outdoors and book it through you. Yep, they go, go through Gunny Bee Outdoors, and that'll put you in contact. Um, I got a contact me form on there, so it's got my phone number and everything too. So between all of that, or even on the uh, Salt Life Preferred Captains webpage, um, you know, if you come up and look under Swansboro, North Carolina, I'll, I'll be probably one of the first ones or if not the only one that pops up in the area. So yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Awesome, man. Well, we really appreciate you coming on and talking to us about your adventures over there on the East coast. Uh, and hopefully we can talk to you again soon. I'd love to talk to you about, uh, the fishing season this year. I mean, duck season is about to end. So let's talk about the fishing season. Uh, and thank you everybody for listening in to today's podcast. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. 